Gave myself the clap. Okay, here we go. Episode two, baby. Get my flex on. Uh, I should keep this stupid shit for bloopers. You know people like Kendrick would like to see that. What's up, everybody? My name's Cody Rattler, and welcome back to another episode of Subnautica. All right, we are back with episode two. If you guys missed the first episode, I walked us through the initial part of the intro, uh, showing you guys which items you should craft right off the bat. We created the scanner, uh, repair tool. I've got a sea glide as well as a knife. Uh, in today's episode, I would like to make a few more upgrades, show you guys a couple more things that you should be focusing on in the early start of this game. First off, I'm gonna start by uh, showing you guys what the waterproof lockers are. It's only four titanium total. Uh, essentially, these are going to be underwater storage units. They're really great for going around, collecting materials, and using for storage. Next up, I want to do the uh, high-capacity O2 tank. What this is going to do is give us even more oxygen than we already have. We're going to need to make another standard O2 tank, which I can do right now. We need one more glass, uh, a handful of titanium, and then we've already got the silver ore. Got enough for the glass. Now I just got to grab some titanium. These little chunks of metal, easiest way. I think we talked about this in the last episode, but a uh, solid way to just grab a handful of metal. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Mm. Alright, got the high capacity O2 tank. Dang, so we just added a... Uh... Wow, we've got 90 seconds of uh, oxygen. That's amazing. Okay, uh, that said, I'm going to put the other O2 tank away. I just don't want to carry it around with me right now. Uh, let's go... Got another radio message. Uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. Three out. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Ooh, so uh, Life Pod 3 is actually not too far away. They reported their sea glide had damage. Honestly, I don't remember that message when I played in my most recent playthrough. There's Life Pod 17. It's only 100 meters deep. Uh, stranded near a cave system. That also sounds pretty exciting. Uh, let me continue making what we're working on right now, and then we'll go start exploring a little bit. Show you guys how the toolbox works. You pretty much just set it out, and then uh, bam, just like that. Mobile storage unit. Looks like it does 16 slots. I'm gonna go stock up on a bunch of ore and then we'll just rendezvous in a minute. Congratulations, Sur Survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. <laughs> Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. Be sure to vary your routine for uniform muscle development. The AI knows me so well. Boy, do I love swimming. Boom, babies. Scan enough for the mobile bay. Uh, that is going to help us create vehicles. All right, we need to make a power cell in order to make that mobile vehicle bay. A power cell is essentially a super battery, so it's going to require two batteries plus silicone. Warning. Local radiation readings suggest the Aurora's drive core has reached critical state. Quantum detonation will occur within two hours. Awesome. So the ship's going to blow up. And we made our power cell. Fun. And we made our mobile vehicle bay. <laughs> Triple whammy! Alright, just like that, we now have the option to craft vehicles. Of course, I don't have any vehicle blueprints to make yet, but uh, possibilities are starting to expand. I'm gonna go ahead and release the mobile vehicle bay just like right here. I like to keep it pretty close to my base because I don't really need it to go anywhere else. Uh, this is a little platform that you stand on. It floats, so it's going to be above water. 
Um, it's got these cool little air droids that float around it to help you craft. When you walk up to it, you've got your vehicles that you can make. Seamoth uh, is the first vehicle we're going to make. I'm actually going to save this for uh, episode 3. So we're going to start crafting vehicles and facilities in the next episode. But we are ready. We are primed. I think if anything today, we might be able to find some of the ingredients for the Seamoth. But let's keep going with, with, with what we have right now. Look at that. Sunlight's coming out. Perfect timing. Okay, I'm going to start working my way towards Life Pod 3 just so that we can... See what's over here, check off the exploration aspect of it. Uh, and we're looking for shoal rocks. They're the smooth rocks as opposed to the limestone, which are a little bit more rough looking. Uh, let me see if I can point any out for us. So these are the limestone ones. We saw these in the last episode. Again, they're like rougher looking. They have more of our core initial stones like copper. Uh, however, there is a, the shoal, which is a smoother rock, if I can find one. And that's going to have a little bit more rare uh, rocks like gold and silver. You notice in the top right radio signal, that means uh, I've got a radio message I can play. Uh, I don't know what any of this is though, so... I just got all this. More titanium, yay. So in each life pod that we find, we can find an abandoned PDA. It's essentially going to be the life pod's crew, or the crew's life pod. And I don't know what that was. Oh, blueprint. Self scan complete. Vital signs normal. Continuing to monitor. Good. Here's some shoal. Or no, so it's sandstone. I don't know why I was calling it shoal. And we got some gold. I need two silver, so not quite the golds. Ooh, here's another like crash site spot. So these are pretty important because uh, a lot of the times they have invaluable or valuable blueprints for us. Also, I want to note the closer we get to the Aurora, the main ship, uh, the more uh, radiation we're going to experience. So I'm going to have to come back to that. Uh, we do not have access to this door yet because we do not have a cutter. There's going to be like a laser cutter that we can get that's going to help us open those doors. Bioreactor, very important. Uh, that is going to help us power up our underwater facility. There's like limestone rock everywhere, but there's not the sandstone rock that I need. A beacon fragment, hell yeah. Beacons are really cool. They're basically just little wireless devices, and we just found our beacon. Uh, they're going to allow us to just put out little spots in the map. It's great for tracking. Look at that. We got a trash can, too. Because, <laughs> you know, we're going to need to keep the, the oceans clean. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just looked down, and there's, like, a geyser right below us. Underwater geyser. Let's go explore it. Shoal, yes, or sandstone. Silver, silver. That's what I'm talking about. Got both the silvers I need. Yes, three more. Lead, also good, lead, gold. Silver, silver, lead. Okay, I went too low there for a second. It's too hot. Let's go back and craft the remaining items that were uh, on our list. Another message. This is Officer Keen in Light Pod 19. The captain is gone. I have assumed command. <laughs> I have the taken over. The captain did was give me coordinates for compass, hell yeah, let's... We regroup one and a half kilometers we'll make the compass in a second. Crash site. Stay together and good luck. This message will now repeat. Rendezvous coordinates corrupted. Transmission origin coordinates downloaded. Signal location uploaded to PDA. 
Okay, I put on the rebreather. Uh, now I've got my first mask. Can also make a beacon. We'll probably make one of those in a second, but for sure I want to make the compass. I'm gonna need one more wiring kit. Good thing I found all those silvers. Compass is just nice because now I'm gonna have directions. If you notice at the top, now I can see which direction I'm actually facing. Uh, if you're good enough, you could just use the ship as your uh, <laughs> your method of North Star. But uh, I'm not I'm not about that life. All right, let's look at what else we need on this list. Uh, one of the things you can build is a flashlight. Um, typically, you could probably rush this if you wanted to get some light for nighttime, but uh, I just didn't really cover it because we have the sea glider, which comes with a flashlight. Obviously, I'm going to have to keep up on my batteries, but... All right, one of the last things that I wanted to build for today was the Habitat Builder. I at least want to make this and then show you guys what we are capable of making with this. So let's go out, gather some of the remaining parts for this, and then maybe go explore one or two more of those, uh, those SOS messages we've received. All right, so we're going to need a computer chip, wiring kit, and battery. Now you're going to notice that my uh, Sea Glide just ran out of battery. So we're going to have to make a new battery to replace the power for it. Later on, we will get these machines that we can add to our bases that recharge our batteries. So we're going to want to get those sooner than later. But as of right now, I'm going to have to make a new battery for the Sea Glide. Oh, shit. Emergency. A quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora Drive Core. <laughs> Aurora's about to blow up. Will reach a super critical state. Let's enjoy it. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Well, there it is. Now the place is littered with radiation. <laughs> so I've got the blueprints for a radiation suit, just like that. Oh, that's looking ugly. It's all blown up and just smoky. Way to contaminate the ocean. I'll let you know we pissed off whatever big scary monsters are out there. Cool, I got enough to make the radiation suit. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and now we are wearing the uh, radiation outfit, so basically I will not be hurt as we get closer to the Aurora and any other areas that may have radiation. Uh, if I need to at any point, I can switch back over to the rebreather mask, which again allows me to breathe at the same level of oxygen regardless of how deep I am in the water. Another Slavery SOS. Quinn, trading ship Sunbeam. Aurora, do you read? Over. Nothing but vacuum. These Altera ships. They run low on engine grease, they send an SOS, you offer to help, they don't pick up. Aurora, I'm out on the far side of the system. It's gonna take more than a week to reach your position. Do you still need our assistance? Over. Yes. I'll try them again tomorrow. I'm here. The damn charter's gonna have us blowing our credits, running errands for Altera. See what the long range scans pick up in the meantime? <laughs> they don't believe me. All right, I am hunting silver ore once again to get the wiring kit one more time. Uh, we're gonna go see if we can get near life pod 17 since we need to go a little far out anyway. Local scans show a nearby cave entrance, depth 90 meters, leading to an unknown Oh, I did not mean to put down the beacon. <laughs> Stop being a little asshole. Integrating new PDA data. Short range scans suggest this biome supports Seamoth fragment diversity and connects to a number of small. Oh, we already got the Seamoth? Cool. Integrating new PDA Anything data. else in here? Sand shark ate the biter or something. You know what? I will leave the beacon here because this is going to be a really cool place to explore later. So this is one of the few places that has a uh, deep, deep cave system. I'm going to call this deep cave. 
We're gonna come back here later, and we're gonna explore the depths of that bad boy. In fact, I might be able to find some silver around here while we're at it. Eh? Maybe? Yes! One more. This might be our last bioreactor fragment. It is! So yeah, the bioreactor is going to power up our home base when we start making it in the next episode. Uh, I want to finish gathering the silver I need for this episode. <laughs> well, I like gold. I love gold! I still only need one more silver. One more silver. This here is a stalker. Uh, it's an aggressive fish, but not really one of the ones you ever have to worry about. Uh, I've never really had any problems with them. Anyway, they have stalker teeth, which is an item that you're going to need. If I can show you guys at some point, I will let you know how to acquire those. And finally, we have the Habitat Builder. This is going to be the last thing that I show you guys in today's episode. Definitely one of my favorite tools. Uh, I didn't get into this bad boy until like my third playthrough. I didn't know what I was doing, so that's why uh, we're making videos for you guys so that you know what to do. <laughs> Are you really trying to attack me right now? I just I just said you weren't really that aggressive and I've never had problems with you. And here you are, proving me wrong. Anyway, Habitat Builder. So, immediately you're gonna recognize that we have a lot of options. We have a foundation, which we're gonna have to build several of these platforms. This is what's gonna allow us to reinforce the actual uh, facility. So we're gonna need a, a quite a few of these in order for the underwater facility to be stable. Uh, otherwise, you're just gonna see various parts of hallways and tunnels that we can create to connect. We are going to need to make a multi-purpose room and a scanner room. It doesn't look like we can make either of those yet. Uh, and if I'm being honest, I don't even think I can make like a room because I'm going to need either one of these two for starters. So again, we are going to explore that a little bit more into the next episode. I'll go over how to pan how to power your facilities uh, like the bioreactor and the solar panels as well as various things that you can build. So we can actually make a fabricator. We can make our own radio and medical kit. We can make a wall locker and then a normal locker, as well as a personal aquarium. So I can go out and gather some fish and put them in my little home base aquarium. Uh, other than that, there are several things that we're gonna see throughout our journey as we scan more items. Uh, a lot of things that they had like in the Aurora like trash cans, um, chairs, desks, beds, stuff like that. We're going to find those scattered throughout the game. In the next episode, we're going to focus on crafting the Sea Moth, which is a one-man submarine. It's going to allow us to go pretty far, uh, travel pretty quickly as well. And we're going to start building the underwater facilities. So I hope you guys are excited. If you guys made it this far into the video, I very much appreciate your time. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it. And subscribe if you want some more content. With that, I'm excited for episode 3, and I will see you guys then. Until next time, my friends, adios!